Good evening everybody and welcome back. We are heading back to Craig Lang to catch up with the guys to see what they're up to this time. And uh, as you know we're doing the kind of second time round recap series because all the original Steel Game reactions were lost with the old channel. I tried to get them back through the Google recovery thing but they deleted them. I didn't know there was a time limit on them so we're just kind of going round again. Uh, but it's been such a long time since you know we started the last channel with Steel Game that... Not every episode is fresh in my mind, so it works. And you guys seem to be enjoying them, you're still watching them, they're getting the views. So uh, we're going to crack on with episode 5. Oot. So uh, yeah, we'll get into this. Let's go. That's the one I've got. Hey, that one there. That's smashing. Aye, that's the sharp 37 inch plasma windscreen. 100 hertz tube, wall mountable. It's the bollocks. What have you got? Amstrad. Washed out colour, all fuzzy around the edges. 14 inch tube, 20 minute warm up. It's bollocks. Oh, aye. I see your dilemma. You see, it's just too wee, son. Sorry, I'm just see the price tag of the television behind his head. A 22-inch LCD sharp widescreen for 129999 1300 quid for a 22-inch. Jesus Christ, how times have changed. <laughs> have you ever tried to watch a big horse race and a portable, eh? I could or probably get a 22-inch smart TV off Facebook right now for about 50 quid. Second hand, literally. The football. Hundreds of tiny wee men chasing about a boy that you can't even see. It's no use. I'm needing something bigger. So what are you after? Size-wise? Uh, I don't know. I mean, how much would that there set me back? £2,700. £2,700, right? £2,700, right? Let me check my pockets. I forgot. It's my arse that's lined with diamonds. Ah, it's my arse that's lined with diamonds. Oh, how, how much would that set me back? Five nine nine. How much were you looking to spend? 80 quid. Max? Aye, well, there's an optician next door. Get yourself a thicker yeah. pair of specs. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you probably could get a, a, a second hand telly back in these days for 80 quid, but it would be shit. Oh, you're like, hi, Tom. Yeah, yeah, right maybe maybe oh, here we go, Birkin hair. Shut your hole, Bobby. <laughs> if we were Birkin hair, we wouldn't be robbing your grave, we'd be pissing in it. <laughs> Two pints of lager, you prick, you. Aye, two pies and all. Two pints of lager, you prick, you. Could you no get steak pie at the funeral? That's the only reason you go to these things, isn't it? Are you going to shut up? Uh -huh. We were there to pay our final respects, that is all. Oh, that's Billy Ferguson buried down. Aye, what's left of him? Bloody liberty, what happened to that man? Mm. What a way to go, eh? Heart attack. Bad for, deed. Lying at the back of the door eight days. Aye, right. Doug eats you. Boz first. In the face. That's what Doug's day, apparently. Aye. Is it? There's nothing left of Billy when they found him. Mind you, the Doug had ballooned up to double the size. Aye. Yeah. All full of Billy. All full of Billy. <laughs> Must be smashing being your age, eh? We pain doing your arm. Doug sitting in the corner like that. Of course, you don't have to worry about a dog eating your boss, eh, Bobby? It's a wee fanny you've got. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you still looking for a hoose up your block? <laughs> you should get onto the council, cos... <laughs> One line empty. Uh, good call, boys. You'll get up there. You'd have to worry about a dog eating your bars. It's a wee fanny you've got. <laughs> yeah. To belly. To belly. Oh, wait. Pay the lager, Bobby. Hello, lads. Oh, oh how's it going, Mason? Been everywhere. That's belly planted. Belly who? Belly knee, boys. Belly knee, boys. What size was his telly? <laughs> hey? Ugh. I was down the high street there looking at new tellies. The one I've got's no use. It's too wee. And? And I can't afford it, can I? They're too dear. I mean, how can they justify all that money just for a telly, eh? That's how I got this. You see, it says here, if you can't afford a big telly, you can build one. Well, that's what today, aye, aye. Oh, and see, while you're at it, go and build me a nice big one and oh, you <laughs> daft 
bits. What are you laughing at, eh? I mean, how hard can it be? If you've got all the bits, the wires and the plugs and the valves and all that. Valves? valves? You didn't get valves and tellies anymore. It's, it's all things and electronicals. That's right, they've got the, um... The, the white light, the big light. The white. the white light, the bit... I think you're heading to the white light there, Jack, because you're clearly not with us, are you? Oh, I can't believe you two haven't been heed hunted for Hitachi. <laughs> Mark my words, there's nothing to you that's telly building. Gonna get that for us, Victor? Hello, clansmen! John! Christ, I thought you were dead. How have you been? Smashing, I'll tell him right away. Cheery bye. That was John Logie Baird. He says you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Look at that! Yes, sign for this. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, am I glad to see you. Hey, what is it? That, son, is a telly. In an envelope. That's right. Right, right. Oh, Archie's coming out. Archie Taylor? Aye. You'll no want to go, but you'll want to stay in and watch your envelope. <laughs> no. <laughs> I want to see Archie coming out. I do remember Archie, because I remember uh, saying he was my favourite, like, one-off character. First time round, I remember saying that, so I do remember Archie. Boat. Well, you want in the lift? Hey, you don't drive. Aye, I do. I've got a van. In here. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up. <laughs> Bobby! Jack, Victor. What are you doing? You were coming in for a pint there. Oh, no, they knew you're no. I'm shot for the next half hour. For what? I didn't get that flat up your block. Archie, go to. Archie's coming out. You know, Archie's coming out. The councillor moved him so they can pull down his old building. You'll never guess. You'll never guess. Archie's coming out. Hi. How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to get up there early. Got a good spot. Got a good look at him. That's what today is, aye. That's what today is. Where's he been in there? Oh, he went in mid 60s, that right, Victor? Aye, mid 60s. That would be when you moved in, aye. I used to stay a couple of doors down from me, so... And he's never set a foot outside his house? No, complete hermit. What's he do for food and that? Well, the social services will pop up twice a week, make sure he's all right. Messages and that. Oh, aye. Social services. That'll keep him up to date with what's going on outside the world, old tip. Oh, he's up to date, all right. Even the hermit knows you're a wanker, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Jarvis and Victor McDade. How are you? How are you? Aye, good. You used to have a load of black hair. <laughs> <laughs> so did you. Aye. Funny. Coming out. Now, Mr. You know, the thing is, up to this point, you know, Sylvester McCoy, he's big. He's a big actor. Like, he was, you know, a doctor and all that. So, this was like the first big time actor they got in the show, right? I can't think of it. Robbie Coltrane hadn't been in it yet, up to this point, I don't think. That's yet to come, isn't it? The Dialer Bus. So, yeah, he was like the first big name actor they got to star in this. So, that was a bit of a look, wasn't it? A bit of a windfall for Ford and Greg to get Sylvester McCoy to star in an episode of their little porky little sitcom on BBC Scotland, you know? Fair play. Taylor, your flitting's at three. Hi. We've got a car arranged for you. We'll take you over to your new flat in the Osprey Heights. Archie, that's your block. Ah, you'll be in with us. 
We'll organise a cup of tea for you and your furniture will arrive in a couple of hours. I can just... A couple of hours? You can just tell the difference between him and everybody else. He's, he's in his acting, he's, he's great. Is the bay horse still out there? It's called the clansman knew me. <laughs> Aye, and it's still a shite hole. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you spend every minute, every God-given minute you can in it, though, don't you? Listen, darling, um, I, I'm going to go for a pint. Is that OK? Aye, of course. We'll give you a lift. No. No, I'd like to walk. Uh, that's all right, darling. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll look after him. OK. Here's your keys. Welcome out, Archie. We all clubbed again. We got you a Big Mac and fries. <laughs> fries? Enjoy your meal. Enjoy oh. your meal. Thank you, son. What is going on with his voice? <laughs> Seriously, what is that? Has his balls not dropped at this point yet? Club to get on. We got you a Big Mac and fries. A Big Mac and fries. <laughs> Jesus. Enjoy your meal. Enjoy oh. your meal. Thank you, son. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't know if I should, if I'm happy about that or what. The first thing they do when this old man comes out is poison him with fast food. <laughs> here you are, mate. I know that you've been a hermit and sat in that flat since the sixties, but here's a fucking McDonald's. <laughs> happy diabetes <laughs> and heart disease. Uh. And look. That was out of this world. Instantly hooked. <laughs> what was it? Can't lie though, Big Macs, they are the absolute dog's bollocks, are they not? They've never huh? not been, they've never got bad. It's probably the only thing in McDonald's that stayed consecu consistently great since like, I can, far back as I can remember. I can remember ordering Big, Big Macs when I was tiny and I'll still have one now. They are just absolutely, yeah, they're great. Hamburgers at McDonald's. McDonald's? Is that a butcher's? <laughs> <laughs> butcher's. No, it's a fast food shop. They've got them at my other place now. Mm. I could get used to them. Oh. You and 30 billion others. <laughs> yeah. See you outside. Aye. Where are the houses? Oh, they're all pumped in. Where are the people? Well, pissed off. Who's the Prime Minister? Mm. Christ, you don't know that either. No. Neither do we. Never get a paper. Days. No, I never take a paper. What would I tell you? I put my boot through that 1966 World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jeff Hurst. <laughs> Stupid thing to do, really. Not at all. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh no. I lost a good wireless that day. <laughs> ah. Ah, you've got a lot of catching up to do, haven't you? What's that? These? No, no name, Bobby. They're optics. They've been about since before a Second World War. That. Or this? This is a microwave. A microwave? What does it do? You'd think that social services had given him a microwave if he's never coming out of his house. It'd have made his life easier, wouldn't it? Convenient. Feel that. Hi. Cold pie. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Look at him presenting it like a prize on fucking. I don't know. What are they, you remember them on corny game shows that they used to have prizes going along on a conveyor belt? Someone standing behind it, a woman in a bikini going. With her hands like the. Woo, you know, doing fucking kata like Mr. Miyagi behind it. Ooh, look at this. <laughs> it's. And it was probably some shite. <laughs> so pleased with itself. Feel like now. Still cold. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. 
get in a McDonald's. Tag team in Big Mac and apple pie together. Oh, I'm not sure I approve of that. You never mix sweet with savoury. No, your apple pie is what you have after. I was never a big fan of them anyway, the McDonald's apple pies. They weren't that great. <laughs> What's a sheet for? This is the screen. That's where you'll see the picture. Well, it's right. me again. How does a picture get your stupid wee telly onto the wall? For God's sake, right, you Luddite. Now, the reason you can see the TV picture from the other side of the room is because it gives out what are known as lumens. So, right. what you do is, you build a box round your telly, harness the lumens, magnify them, and then you project them onto a blank white screen. <laughs> Voila, big bastard telly. Jesus Christ, Winston, he, he, walked so that YouTubers using green screen could run. That's basically what that is. He's got a sheet hanging from his ceiling that he's projecting an image onto it. Fair enough. <laughs> Very eloquent. Very what you do is, you build a box round your telly, harness the lumens, magnify them, and then you project them onto a blank white screen. <laughs> Voila. Big bastard telly. Big bastard <laughs> telly. <laughs> Very technical. <laughs> Aye. And once this is finished, I'll be building another one. What for? Anybody that wants one. Because once you see this baby in action, you'll all be wanting one. All that science has gave you a big heed. Shut up, Igor, and hit the lights. The monster is about to awake. <laughs> right, let's see this monster then. <laughs> oh no, that's no right. That doesn't sound good. Who is that? What the <laughs> fuck? Look at Kyle Minogue. Is he in real life? She's Toti. See <laughs> in real life? She's Toti. <laughs> Hey ho, you fit? No, I don't fancy coming out today, boys. Hey, oh, we're going to do all sorts. It's probably knackered. No, I'm feeling a bit tired, you know. Oh come on, yeah, look at him one of them tired. cheesy burgers you like. No, I think I'll pass on that if that's all right. Aye, uh, fine, eh? See you now. Tarzan. Did you say Tarzan now? Aye, Tarzan. Tarzan. Hey, what about him? Well, there's Tarzan, right? He lives in the jungle. Brought up by animals, very, very sheltered. He only knows the law of the jungle. Aye. We wee pal, treat had a monkey. <laughs> Aye. Then he gets taken into civilization, but he doesn't fancy it. Uh huh. Aye. So, he goes back to what he knows. He goes back to the jungle. Right. That's smashing, Victor. You seem to know the Tarzan story. What in the name of Christ is that going to do with Archie? <laughs> Jesus, Jack. Archie's Tarzan. Oh, come here, don't talk a lot of piss. I see you're on about. Archie comes out, he doesn't fancy it, he's a way back in. He's named more than a shaved monkey, Jack. Well, let, let so him Archie's hear Tarzan. Aye. That. Well, that would make his flat the jungle. Yes, sir. So who's cheater the monkey in all this? Nobody. <laughs> Archie's about to hold himself up again. I know. We know the years have passed, millions of things have happened, and he's nain the wiser. Yeah, we'll go to the library, right? We'll get books, loads of old newspapers, and tell him every single thing that's happened for 1966. There's no need for that. What is it now? Right, Tarzan, this woman here wants a word with you. Basically your own personal walking Wikipedia. <laughs>
on world affairs and everything that's going on in your own backyard. She knows everybody's business. <laughs> and this is yesterday's paper. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Imagine, Navid, a home cinema in your front room. You could go for a piss and no miss half the flick. You could have a baby. See, it's my house. No couples practically shagging in front of you. Nobody at your shooter gab, gab, gabbing all the way through the film. Uh, I take it Ice is no invited then? No. Ah, uh, quality. So, how much is this technology costing you? Tenner. Add me to your list of doubting Thomases. You are an idiot. Good. I'll see you tonight. The main feature starts at eight. Ooh, the main feature. Here, you feeling a bit better after you sit down with my eyes? Or? I'm Jack, I'm. She's got a gob on her, hasn't she? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, lads, for the first time, I'm actually enjoying being out. Good. Oh, that's smashing. Good up. So, uh, what made you become a hermit? Christ's sake, Bobby! I mean, you tacky, butchered bastard, you! Yeah. Oh, it's all right, boys. <laughs> well, that's just curious. I was evacuated to a farm during the war. A lovely big place. Are you past Get me on it! <laughs> Quiet. It was an old couple who looked after me. Really old. It was great. Every morning I'd help him feed the animals. I had my own horse. The whole thing. Nice. Then we got news. My dad had been killed in Belgium. Four months after that, my mom dies of TB. Jesus. I could have got him Uncle John's, but my Auntie Betty wasn't keen. Didn't have any kids. Must have liked it that way. So I grew up on a farm. Of course, they died. Aye. The farm didn't belong to me. The bank took it. I came back here and got a hoose off the corpy. Jesus, coming back to this place was like coming to New York. I mean, the place was jumping. There was cars everywhere, buses, music, factories, gangs around the book killing each other. <laughs> I mean, coming back from a farm to all that, well, you know, it was just too much. Yeah. Well, at first I was going out, you know, to the shop and that, but that winter I got pneumonia. And that's when the social worker got involved. They were bringing the messages, and that was it. <laughs> I got better, but I never went out again. One year, a wee moose came, looking for scraps and that. I was encouraging it, you know what I mean? I was quite happy to run up your arm. I used to talk to it. <laughs> Sometimes I even imagine it talk back. <laughs> uh, every day it came, regular as clock. So did it die? Aye, it died. Yes, I think it must have done that. I was having my cornflakes one morning, pouring them out into the bowl. It turns out he'd been gone every day as well. Regular as clockwork. The cornflakes had we shit boys all the way through. Oh. <laughs> Just set a trap, snap the wee bastards back. <laughs> Still can't look at a cornflake. <laughs> Still can't look at a cornflake. <laughs> Call a day, Inavid. Aye, just a softies for me. Oh, God. Are you in? Aye, I'm in. Great story, though. And you see, as I said, you know, you can tell the difference between him and everybody else. He's a proper actor. Everyone else is. There's no wrong with them, you know. I mean, I wouldn't be watching this if I didn't like them, but you can tell, like, the difference, can't you? These are more comedians and comedy actors. He's a proper actor, yeah. No, but... I love how they set it up for everyone in the pub to just shut up as soon as he starts talking and then turn round and just listen to him. I love that. Come my way through. There's still a couple of good seats left. Hey, we've brought up to you, if that's all right. Of course. Here's some beer here for you, Winston. Good. I'll stick them in the fridge. Here. You come through here with me. Right. You'll like this. Now, I bought this malt back in 1966. 14 quid it cost me back then, that was a lot of money. Ah, yeah. Oh. I was going to open it when England get beat, but needless to say, it's still no opened. Uh, funny that, isn't it?
Here's to you, old chum. Out and about. That's a really nice thing, Winston. That's a really nice thing you've done. Oot in a boot. Oot in a boot. Down in one. Yeah. Don't be touching that. Nice. I'm switching that on. What are we watching? <laughs> the 8 o'clock movie. Tower and Inferno. <laughs> Paul Newman's a fireman and Steve McQueen's the architect. Not damn. It's the other way about. Right. Well, I've one mare, then I'm putting that away. You know what? And the arsehole's getting it. Ah, oh, you're holding out on us with the good stuff. It's Fred Astaire no, in the town in the film. We've got to sit here and drink fucking cans of tenants and cola, and you're having a, a cheeky wee malt that cost you 14 quid back in 1966. Thanks, Winston. All right. We well, don't talk pish. Fred Astaire wasn't he in the town in the oh, I'm sure he is. Oh, that's right, now. He comes in and he goes like that. Hard on the new, the building's in fire. <laughs> I remember that. Hold on, the new, the building's on fire! <laughs> what a snare. Actually, Jackie is, isn't it? <laughs> Turn Inferno, 70s disaster classic, starring Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, William Holden, and Fred Ayaf. Ayaf! <laughs> <laughs> 7.30, Christ, Winston, here, hurry up, this way. Oh, Christ, Christ sake. Sake. Come on, hey, right, hold on. David, up and get out to your seat. Oh, no, 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 that's all right. No, no, no. no. Shh. You, up, you, sit down. <sighs> this is rare. Right. <clears throat> now, gentlemen, what you're about to witness this evening... Shut up and turn it on. Probably no work anyway. I'm need the fish. Sit your ass. I'm need the fish. Sit your ass. Prepare to be amused. <laughs> That's fantastic! Oh, it's like a, like a picture hall! Oh, I don't know what to see. Ah, he's a clamp, isn't he? Now, what's happening here, gentlemen, is that the light has been refracted from the tube onto the Oh, lens. there he is! Fred Astaire, eh? Huh? You're the right <laughs> up, you Jack! Oh, shut up! Shut up! Oh, crystal clear! Look at that! Look at the flames! <laughs> Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you can practically smell it. Really? Aye, right, that's because your curtains are on fire, Winston. Oh, gee! <laughs> Don't throw a fucking beer on the fire! <laughs> <laughs> big, big screen telly for a ten, are you? <laughs> big screen ten for a ten. <laughs> oh, he's got me going. Big screen telly for a tenner, eh? <laughs> What's a set of curtains of pelmet off a cap in a radiogram? <laughs> he wants a set of curtains of pelmet off a cap in a radiogram? He's <laughs> a bastard! He is, yeah! I mean, it could have been a lot worse! Aye, aye. Could have been, I suppose, eh? Could have been Tower and Inferno. Aye, the sequel. Well, this is my floor. <laughs> Greg Langadish. Oh, thanks for a great night, lads. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Bastards! You better phone the polis. <sighs> well, no need the polis. Name of Christ is all that. That's about 40 years worth of social money. You should have that in the bank. Wow. I've not been out. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been out. <laughs> you should have it in the bank, Elsie. Hi. I know. How much would that be? Do you know that's a fortnight? Is anybody... I mean, you know, I'm not Scottish, so I don't know, but you you guys are, so maybe you can add it up. He says 40 years worth of social money. He went into his flat in 1966 or 19... whenever. And this was done in, what, 2004, 2003? So, how much would it have added up to over the years? What would he have been getting? So he's a hermit, you know, psychologically damaged, so he was probably on some form of disability benefit. How much would that have added up to? I wish they'd have covered that. No, and still nobody's seen him. Some... Oh, well, he's not coming back out, is he? First time in years he sets foot out of his door and he gets his hoose tanned. Must be a few Bloody grand. liberty. Aye. Enough to turn them down to a hermit. It's a shame too because he was getting on so well. I was selling in nice, the pub and that. <laughs> Couldn't redecorate it, is it? Yeah, I don't think that's right, you know, locking yourself away like that. I've got a good mind to go up to his door and say something to him, eh? Oh, I'm not so sure, Jack. Jack. Show the dragging him down the stairs. What are you going to say to him to get him out? Mm. 
Listen to you two. Get him out to what, eh? Craig Lang. A shite hole of the first order. I mean, it's alright for us. We're used to it. Aye. It's him for us, we don't know any better. But he's come out, he's taken one look at Craig Lang and all his occupants, us three included, and he's thought, stick that up your arse. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> pals are few and far between at our age. I think we should be keeping a watch out for him, you know. Or at the very inside, go up to the door and tell him he's making a big mistake. Well, it's your call. Aye. Aye. Aye, you're right, Jack. Come on. Mm -hmm. Right, chap the door. What about it, chap it? This was your idea. Ah, uh, you agreed with me. Get the bloody door, chap. You chap it. You chap it. Chap chap it. Will you chap the door? <laughs> Lads. Look, Archie. Is it your intention not to come out again? Uh, before you answer, you'd be sadly missed. I mean, we were getting on really well. No, I'm not coming out, lads, again. But think about all you're gearing up. Like what? Well, there's us, the park, the tune, the clansmen. OK, forget the clansmen, but there's lots to do. <laughs> Lads, you're being lovely, but don't worry. I've been used to staying indoors all the years. That's what I know. That's what I'm comfortable with. Archie, how can you be comfortable with that? It's a miserable existence. Yeah, but it's the, old, it's the one he's become used to, so you can't, you know, and it is age, you can't really... Push him into, you know, what, what, what's he going to do? Get a flat in Glasgow and get a job as a financial... You know, he, he's retired, he's an old man, you can't. If he's happy that way, then he's not hurting anybody, is he? Wow. Miserable existence. <laughs> yeah. Probably. As you can see, I didn't he bank the money. <laughs> and I'll no go short of company. Build himself a little paradise in his flat. Oh. <laughs> ah, mouse. So you've made your mind up then? I have, Jack, I. One. Cheerio, lads. Hi, Archie. Can't blame him for that. I've left my bonnet in there. To get you a new one. Oh, have you? <laughs> Hold on, did he even turn up with one? Okay. Yeah, he did. Fair enough, he did. Is this new? <sighs> what is that? It's a parcel. You have to sign for it. Aye. Well, you better bring it in here. Stick it through here. Right, stick it there. Dear Winston, thanks for the dram. Leave the telly building to the Japs. Archie. Oh, oh, oh. oh, look. Right, it must have been a lot of money then. He's had enough to do up his flat like that. It looks like some kind of show, show flat, like you see in the adverts when you look for properties. And he's had enough left over to buy Winston a big screen telly. When he was in the shop, he was saying something like that had cost nearly three grand. So it must have been a lot of money that he saved up. Chris, a telly in an envelope. <laughs> a telly in an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> Coming out. Can we not come in? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely big telly. Lovely uh -huh. big telly. Any leather couches. Leather couches. Technically, you still would be a hermit, Archie. Aye, there's nothing to say a hermit nothing. can't have visitors, Archie. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Archie. Archie. Ugh. <laughs>
Game's a bogey, lads. Well, I suppose that's that then, eh? Yeah. Aye. Uh, I see a pint at the Klansman. Aye. Aye. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you didn't forget your hat. That's a good man. Oh, well, there you go, guys. That's the end. Still one of the all-time best episodes, this. Yeah. I'm glad that, I, that not too much of it was familiar to me because it had spoiled it a bit. Uh, but yeah, just really good. Yeah, um, as I said, getting a big actor in it like Sylvester McCoy, you know. I mean, he's not Gary Oldman, but he was. You know, if if you've played Doctor Who for any length of time in your career, then you've you know that's pretty much the British actor's way of knowing that you at some point were. You were up there with, you know, the cream of the crop of actors. Um, but yeah, it's a great character, memorable character. Um, the little speech he does in the pub, it's very engaging. And it's this episode when that started to, you're being brought into it, you know, it wasn't, it started moving away from being just a straight comedy. I mean, they've touched on a couple of things in other episodes before this, but. You know, like the cold episode, even though it's mostly comedy, it does, it is based on a very real fact that pensioners in Scotland, if they haven't got any money, then they do sit in their flats freezing and they can die. But this, you know, this had a real focus on it, that entire monologue in the pub where he's just telling about what what happened to make him end up like that. And, uh, yeah, they picked someone really, the actor really well for the role. And, uh just can't believe Winston, though. Thinking he could build a telly for a tenner. What did he think was going to happen apart from his curtains being burnt down? <laughs> what did he even do? Did he just put a box around his telly with a glass screen in it? Just a big magnifying glass over his telly, really. I mean, come on. Yeah. Didn't they have ceiling-mounted projectors by now at this point? I'm pretty sure they did, because I can remember we had one in the school I was in by 2006-ish. So surely they hadn't by now in, in this. Uh, but yeah, great episode. Loved it. Um, definitely one of the best. It's up there. So, I guess that concludes this one. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll uh, still be releasing the Patreon-based still games. You know, the series 7 onwards, we're down to series 9 now, we're nearly done, what, what are we, oh, it's episode 1 of series 9, so yeah, we've, I'll be uploading them gradually for you all, and uh, we'll continue with this, um, and once we've finished a few series, um, we'll probably go back around with Chewing the Fat again, because a lot of those episodes were lost with the last channel as well. So, if you want me to do, we can do that again. Because, uh, that was always funny. I mean, there's there's probably more episodes of Chewing the Fat than Still Game from the last channel available. But, there's still quite a few that aren't. So, I think... Oh, what does it go to... So series three, episode two. That was the last one from the old ones available. Then I went straight into series four. Oh no! Oh, they're not in order. Are they not? I thought they would be. Hmm. Series one, episode five. Yeah, there's the odd ones. And, uh, if you go down to the bottom, is that a th I thought there might be another one. Some series one, episode six, there's that one. And I think that's it. 
Yeah, I think that's it. So, but I'll do the ones that don't that haven't been saved or that haven't been done. But anyway, thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video if you did. Let's try and get this video to, I don't know, 30 likes. That's possible and I still game these days. They're not far off that. And subscribe. Let's get to uh, 1,700 as soon as possible. We're nearly there again. What are we on? 1,600 and what? 25, right? Fair enough. Yep. It's definitely doable. We've, got, we've gone up by 74 in the last 28 days, which isn't great, but, you know, it's says that we'll get to 1700 by the end of the month. What? No. Maybe by 10th of April, around that time. And uh, come and join us on Patreon as well. You know, you can get all the still game content, everything on there. So there's all the episodes of still game from Series 7 onwards without the editing that, that you have on YouTube, without the, you know, the text and the background sound. Um, and you've also got all the YouTube poop still games and a couple of originals. There's Hatch, Begin couple of others, they're on there as well, um, and they're all available in the cheapest tier, so, yeah, you'd be daft not to really, um, and as well, you know, if you go to the about section on the Patreon, it tells you everything that's available, so, you know, there's all this, early access and exclusives, so go check that out, and don't forget we've got some special offers on as well, on memberships, um, that's the pinned post, the latest public post available on the Patreon, you can see that. And there's a post on the YouTube community tab as well. You'll find it. There's a picture of a price tag. It says special offers on it. So I'll just read through that and you'll see everything that we've got going on for March discounts. Um, yeah, so that's it. Thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.